All right, markets surging on stimulus bets today, sending the Dow to its biggest gain of the year, nearly 300 points. Our next guest says today's risky asset rally will result in some selling, perhaps, later this summer. Michael Wolfolk, Bank of New York Mellon Managing Director, joins us right now. Sandy, back with us as well. Michael, a pleasure to see you. Okay, what do you mean here with this risky asset rally resulting in selling later this summer? Explain. Yeah. Well, essentially what we had here was a, a bear market rally, a dead cat bounce. Uh, the, the market had become overly short euros, overly short stocks, risky mm -hmm. assets. Uh, so until we get resolution to the Greek exit question, the, the market is going to continue to be defensive. And uh, what we see today is not going to be a reflection of what we see in the coming weeks. So maybe just more volatility in the coming weeks. Well, we have volatility and quite likely uh, there is going to be further turmoil in Europe regarding uh, the uh, election on the 17th and whether or not they can form a coalition government. There's still the outstanding issue of uh, whether or not uh, Europeans are going to agree to a finance ministry uh, to a euro bond, which may be their only salvation unless they decide to have uh, a political union. So my question, what, how much of this is discounted into the market? I mean, how much of this, uh, you know, 9 out of 10 people are negative, 9 out of 10 people are bearish. How much of this is discounted into the market? Well, what's interesting mm -hmm. is that we find in terms of market data right. and our own proprietary data as the world's largest custodian bank, there are, there's quite a bit of movement from the periphery into the core, uh, but there isn't movement from the core outside of Europe. Okay, so that's why you see uh, French oats and uh, German buns, uh, yields continue to collapse to uh, record lows, reflecting record highs in prices, mm -hmm. is that there's not really a concern about uh, the uh, riskiness of uh, French and German bonds. The, the concern is, is what happens to the, the periphery, to Spain, to Italy, to Greece especially. Isn't that nuts? I mean, why would you feel so safe in German bonds if Germany is on the hook for 27, 28 percent? Well, that's, uh, that's the real question, right. uh, Matt. And uh, the reason uh, for my concern is that that's the next step, right? The next step is that the fear factor begin, becomes so great that there is a movement mm -hmm. out of German and, and French oats at some point. And we saw, I mean, we're looking at here, the right side of this chart, you really see it moving up. It starting, is. It is. starting. Right, so so where That's does right. that leave our 10-year yield? Where does that leave the 30-year yield? I mean, are people then going to continue to seek these safe assets here in the U.S.? Well, I think that the, the question is overwhelmingly yes. And one of the reasons for that is the status of the U.S. dollar is unique in the global mm -hmm. financial system. At the center, the financial system represents over 90 percent of all foreign exchange transactions, uh, two-thirds of all uh, foreign exchange reserves, uh, the currency denomination for commodities internationally. Uh, that's hard to replicate. So the, the move to cash mm -hmm. uh, will be overwhelmingly dollars as a defensive play, and that to earn at least a marginal yield, it would be bonds. Uh, government bonds denominated in dollars. So, be looking at so Span oh. Spanish bonds were over 6% and then the ECB came in, flooded, you know, basically all those 800 lenders with basically over a trillion dollars of 1%, really cheap money. The yields went down to 2%. We're back over 6%. How do we get out of this mess? Well, I, I think that, again, that, that the next shoe to fall really is how far our government officials in Europe willing to go in terms of uh, allowing the uh, speculators to continue to hit these uh, peripheral bonds, right. such as in Spain, okay? Uh, there'll come some point where um, the CDU in, in Germany uh, will be under political attack, will not have the political support uh, necessary to continue to throw good money after bad mm. uh, to finance the periphery. And already there's talk in the market of uh, other uh, G7 uh, concerns outside of Europe coming to, to the aid, uh, perhaps even the United States itself. So uh, you already start to see some of the cracks, I think, in Europe's capability to take care of its own. Okay. Michael, thank you so much.